tough team to guard because of what they do offensively with five out. Mafu plays not like a point forward, a point center, which is tough. Uh, but I've got one of the better backcourts in the nation. And my biggest regret is not meeting Elijah and, and uh, Tyson a lot earlier. They're both playing terrific. They're mature. Both had uh, seven deflections. Uh, Elijah had five assists, no turnovers, three steals. Tyson had 20 points, uh, four steals. So we've got a great backcourt. They're mature, great guys. It's an honor to coach them, and we're excited about this victory. So you obviously scored 20 this game. What was, it, what was the biggest factor in why you were able to get to the basket and score? Uh, just being more aggressive, uh, trying to get to my spots, taking and making open shots, and just kind of doing what I do every day. When the game was tied going into the half, what was the message that um, your coach gave you at halftime to kind of bring the team together, come back out in the second half, and start how you play, how you guys needed to? We had to stop giving up the three and stop giving up penetration. And I think uh, the first half they had like five threes, the second half they had two. So uh, that was a halftime adjustment. You held Marpo to only eight rebounds today, and he's one of the best rebounders in the entire country. What was your game plan for him? Nelly, Nelly was locked in. Nelly, uh, coach, coach was getting on Nelly all week about how good of a player he was. And Nelly came out today and was letting him know that uh, he wasn't going to be the one to beat us today. Chris Piak played a lot of 2 3 zone, and you guys struggled a little bit from three to start out the uh, game in the second half. But what did you do to correct that going into the rest of it? Uh, we just had to start moving more. I think we were kind of stagnant in the zone early on, and then we started getting the ball to the middle, um, started uh, making the right reads, making passes, making cuts, and I feel like we started breaking it down, and that's how we started scoring. Your physicality was really all over this game. What was the moment in the second half that sort of made you flip that switch to take over? Uh, it, it was winning time. You know, we knew we had, to, uh, we had to get more physical. We had to get on the board. We had to stop them from shooting the threes, and we had to keep them off the glass so they couldn't get second shots. So we knew we had to be more physical, we had to talk more, and we had to uh, come together to finish it off. You guys have survived a lot of tough games, played a lot of tough opponents. Uh, so when a game is, is kind of in the balance like this one was with six, seven minutes to go, what's, what's, what are the huddles like? What's the confidence level that you guys have when you're in those situations, have it demonstrated that you can win? Uh, like Coach said, we got an older backcourt being Elijah, so we've been through uh, a lot of these wars, you know, we, we got Dylan, he's been here five years. Uh, Nelly, he's a sophomore, but he played a lot of the games, going to the tournament last year. And then we got some young freshmen who listens to us. So as long as we stay together and coach always get, puts us in the right position to win, and we listen to coach, we stay together and we stay focused, we always have a chance to pull it out. Tyson, so many games in this sort of conference season, how close is this team to realize there's full potential? I know there's still a long way to go. Yeah, um, I think we're getting better every day. You know, I feel like uh, we're making we're making right we're making the right defensive defensive improvements. You know, we're starting to really lock down and guard on defense. I feel like offensively, we're still gonna take a lot of steps that we haven't took. Everybody getting more comfortable. You know, getting the bench guys more comfortable and getting the starters more just involved and more aggressive and just coming out with a mindset of we're not gonna lose. They can't guard us, and we can guard them. Follow that up. What do you say about the job that Barrett has done locking down opposing guards one-on-one? -on -one? Rick's holding the MVP of the team on multiple occasions. What can you say about his defense? It, it's tremendous, you know, because any, any given night we can come out and put Barrett on anybody, and he's, he's going to shut him down. He's going to have he's going to make them have a frustrating night, so it kind of makes it easier for us knowing Barrett got him locked down. We don't have to worry about him, so now we can focus on what our man does, you know, and if our man's not a shooter or he's a driver, we may can give Barrett more help, but we can tell Barrett just – Lock in on your man and lock him down. And once coach tells him to do that, I mean, you, you, you ain't got to worry about it. You know, you're undefeated in conference play. I think naturally there's sort of a sense that it's sort of your league to lose. So how do you stay focused game in and game out to make sure you don't fall into the trap? Um, I mean, we come into practice every day, and every day is a war. So even though we're, we don't play games every day, every day in practice is like a game. And uh, I think we come into practice every day. We compete hard. You know, nobody wants to lose in practice. And I feel like uh, going into the games, I've never, I've never uh, been on an undefeated conference team. You know, that's, that's hard uh, to do. Everybody knows your plays. Everybody knows what you're going to do, your tendencies. And I just feel like as a team, we all just lift each other up. Like if it, one person's having a bad game, somebody else steps up. And then everybody stepping up is giving everybody 
else time to get their stuff together during the game so they can get back focused and right and we can all finish the game strong and I feel like we've done a good job doing that. Being undefeated and being the team that won this conference last year, how much of a target do you guys feel on your back? Um, you know, everybody. we feel like we're going to get everybody's best game every day and I feel like uh, we're stepping up to the challenge, you know. I don't feel like we're, we're relaxed, we're comfortable or anything. I feel like we're really hungry, we really want to do this. And we believe we can do it. And I don't believe we took any opponent lightly uh, this year. I don't think we are. And I feel like uh, as long as we keep doing that, preparing and practice, and keep coming out with the mindset to win at all costs, I feel like uh, at the end of the year, we'll be in a good position. We have one more for, for Tyson or anything else? So we can get him out of here. Yeah, you've been, you've been around the college basketball scene, starting on Baylor and then two years at SMU, and now you find yourself over in, in New Rochelle and Iona. What, what was the big sell to really come here and, you know, maybe knowing you'd be in the situation now, but what was the big sell for you to come here to the Gales? Um, honestly, uh, Coach Tom, they call him the Alphabet Man, Tom Abbott Marco, you know, he had been recruiting me. Uh, he was one of the first people to offer me, you know, and uh, he had been on my trail for a long time. And after I left Baylor, he was calling me. Um, and after I left SMU, he was calling me. And I, I wasn't wasn't really answering him. He had built a really good relationship with my family, and uh, my family really trusted him. And that was a big thing, like coming into another school, especially being away from everybody, like having a trust factor. And I feel like uh, my family really trusted Coach Tom, and I trusted Coach Tom. And then when I got on the phone with Coach Patino, it seemed like he he uh, had his be my best interest at hand. And I feel like uh, it was a win situation all the way around. Okay, thank you. One of the things statistically is when, you, you know, we, we felt at halftime, and I, I said, we need my son's team, an example. My son's team is decimated out at New Mexico. They have no size. The players got hurt. Players, uh, and he's in a rebuilding year. But he's hanging in there with some of the toughest teams in the country because of the three-point shot. And doing a fabulous job with them. And I told him at halftime, I said, the three-point shot is a great neutralizer in basketball. Teams can beat you if you don't defend the three. And they had um, six, uh, six threes at halftime and only had two in the second half. Then if you take care of that, and at the flip side, you run your offense, get to the foul line, don't turn the ball over, the better team will win in the end. And Quinnipiac could have been the better team if we gave them the three ball because they play five out. So we did a really good job. We only had seven turnovers, 18 assists. And the um, backcourt is strong, the players are strong. Nelly did a really good job. Not giving um, Kevin Muffle an offensive rebound is a terrific job. Rick, I asked Tyson about Barrett, and I'll ask you the same thing. You hold, you hold ball out to one of nine shooting. What can you say? Barrett didn't play that much tonight, no. That wasn't Barrett. Um, Barrett would only play uh, 18 minutes and 30 seconds. You're right. He is a terrific defense player, locks people down, but he didn't lock them down tonight. It was the other guys that locked him down. Now, when he was in there, he played great defense. But if Barrett uh, didn't play his normal minutes tonight, it was a collective uh, collective group that played him. But he, he is excellent. He is a great defensive player. You talk about uh, all the three points, three points that you eliminated in the second half. And how were you able to just do that uh, and get back into your rhythm? It's not easy because they run such a good offense. They run a backdoor offense. They have five out. They cut off the post. Uh, Baker's an outstanding uh, offensive basketball coach. He really is one of the best in our league, and they're tough to guard. And, you know, I was panicking because yesterday we had a high school tournament in our gym. We went to another gym and couldn't practice because the floor was too slippery, so I, I didn't feel we were prepared for this game. I was panicking. Fortunately, the guys are smart and a very intelligent group to make the adjustments at halftime. Um, and you came in with such a pedigree. How were you able to find your way into the system and then be able to be on the team at you know, it's, it's whether you're coaching at Kentucky, Louisville, I own, it's all the same. It really is. I've said it a hundred times. The coaches, Baker Dunleavy's as good as any coach in the ACC. Offensively, he's a brilliant mind. All these coaches are fabulous. Look, we could have lost to Marist twice. We could have lost to Fairfield. could have lost to Harvard. We've won a lot of games in the final five minutes by executing the right way defensively as well as offensively. So, you know, uh, Playing is playing, coaching is coaching. The MAC is, is a much better conference than people even can imagine. Uh, I don't, I, I know we could lose to the last place team very easily. I told the guys the other day, you're a five or a six on a 10 star scale execution wise. 
And come February, I want you at a seven, eight, and then come March, I want you at an eight, nine. So we're making our way, and we're doing a very good job with only seven turnovers, eight, uh, eight, 18 assists. Last year in the MAC tournament, you limited Quinnipiac to under 50 points. Today, they were a little bit better offensively. What was the biggest strength change that you saw from the Bobcats in that month's game? Well, I think, obviously, the addition of Muff was a big difference. You know, when you have a point center, it's very unusual. But I think they've got experience, Rigoni. Um, they got terrific guards. You know, I really mean this. Uh, I, I say it all the time. I've coached against some great coach against Frank McGuire's last game, Dean Smith. Baker Dunleavy, when you when you play against his teams, they're as tricky as any team I've coached against. He's really, really a terrific coach. But I say this about every. They think I'm patronizing. I'm not patronizing. Usually, I don't say a word. I just pay attention to my team. These guys are great. So it's an honor to coach against them, and I'm really, really impressed with them. Rick, you mentioned what happened yesterday with the, the practice. Uh, and it's safe to say that's not the kind of thing that you might have to deal with in other places that you've been. Does that kind of thing kind of make this fun for you, that you have to overcome maybe some of those kind of challenges? Well, we, we bought Concordia College, so we had another gym, mm -hmm. and we went to, it wasn't anybody's fault, because the reason we didn't have our own gym was because of COVID. Right. Uh, the schedule changed. So then we went to Concordia and the softball team was in there and the, you know, banging softball all over the place made the floor like an ice skating rink. So it was difficult, but you make adjustments. Uh, it scares the hell out of me. It's the first time it's happened in my long career. But you make adjustments and you move on. It's nobody's fault. It's just when you're at, you're, you're at Iona, you know, people share the facilities and you know, uh, it's too cold to go outside for the softball team. I was, I was trying to get Yankee Stadium for them, but they wouldn't let us in. How close is this to being really your kind of team? Uh, to doing all the things that... It's, get, it's getting there. It's, you know, I'm, I'm at a stage in my life where I'm enjoying teaching the game of basketball, and that's it. You know, there's, I tell players this all the time, nothing good about being 69. You learn what not to do all the time, and you, 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 you gain wisdom in your life, but you don't have to coach for money. You don't have any motivation to move up the ladder and go anywhere else. So it's really fun just teaching and playing. And believe it or not, this is the largest media contingent I've had in two years. So I have a media <laughs> contingent of a couple of guys each game, and they're great, and they're really nice people. So it's, uh, it's great. Um, it's, it's really a, a wonderful experience for me I enjoyed Boston University many years ago, my first head coaching job, and now I'm coaching Iona, and it's, it's a wonderful experience. Uh, I really, really enjoy it. And, and I truly believe we can be as good as, um, at the highest level, I think we can become something special. We're trying to get, we can't say Gonzaga because they, they're recruiting top five, top 10, uh, but we can become a Loyola or a Chicago if we keep recruiting well. You know, how at this point, you just like teaching the game, but, and you've been in so many insane situations with Teams. Are you still learning anything coming down to the mid-major? Well, I learned from the EuroLeague that all our offenses are, are foreign offenses. And uh, the offenses we ran before didn't have as much ball movement, not as much player movement. So the EuroLeague, I'm, we're running a play of Fenerbahce, we're running a play of Panathinaikos, Olympiakos, I'm running all foreign plays and always adding. And I learned an awful lot from that brand of basketball, loved it. Two of my favorite years in coach, all of coaching were coaching Panathinaikos. I loved it. Every experience I loved, the travel I loved. Um, you know, it's like the NBA except flying coach. It's, it's, just, <laughs> it's just fun. Uh, coach, um, what, did you, what did you want your team to do to counteract when it gets 2-3 zone? Well, we've attacked zones great the whole year. We, they gave us the shot right below the foul line, and we hesitated from taking it. And we got to go to work on that shot because our guys hesitated. They went man to man when the ball went inside, which was a great move. And uh, we, we couldn't make that shot. Uh, and then we, in the second half, we did a much better job of moving. I know you mentioned how much fun this whole experience has been for you, but what sticks out the most? Um, I guess we put together a group. Some, you know, you've heard this many times in your life from your mom's your grandma. One rotten apple spoils the bunch. And you get one turd on your team, kills the team. We don't have any. We got all great guys. And, and by the way, they're big time players. Nellie Joseph is a big time basketball player. 
Uh, my back goes big time. Ryan Myers tonight, you know, nobody mentioned it, but was terrific. We moved him from two guard to one guard and moved Walt from one to two, and Ryan was terrific tonight. So I guess it's what makes it fun is the guys you coach. I've coached some teams that were dynamite teams, but if you get one or two guys in your team that just don't buy into the whole team concept out there, it's not as much fun. And that's why the Euroleague was fun. I coached 12 great guys at Panathinaikos. Um, I, I never forget this story because we're, we're in Tel Aviv. That's really a funny story. It just shows you how the Euroleague's different. You can't ever have a drink with a player in college or, or in the pros. You can't, can't do that, obviously, and make headlines. So I'm sitting there reading a book in Tel Aviv because we have a 3.30 flight back. They didn't want us to spend the money for an extra night in the hotel. So I'm sitting at the airport at uh, 11.45 reading a book, and Nicolaitis comes up to me and, 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 and James Gist and says, Coach, come on, we'll buy you a beer. And right away, I registered to, I can't, I can't have a beer with the players. Says, come on, Coach, we're pros. <laughs> so I go order a Bud Light, and they order two double Jackson Cokes. I said, no wonder we're losing all the time. <laughs> 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 and, uh, it was just so much fun. And, and that's the experience I had there and this experience. And the last, what I experienced of leaving college wasn't the greatest. And the, and the, uh, the two years of Panathinaikos, and now it's just a wonderful experience in my career, so I'm really, really fortunate and happy to be a coach at Biola. Rick, you praise your players for their colleges, but also for being able to adjust in the different spots. And obviously, you recruited across a number of places. You mentioned Boston University, but also the Big East or PC and Louisville. So what have you learned about like the right ways to recruit to get those kind of players into your system? You know, the most unique person I've ever met in this game is Tom Abadamarco. He recruited Jeff Rulin for Iona many years ago for Jimmy B. He recruited, uh, he was part of that national championship at NC State. I've never ever, get, recruiting is, if you're, a, if you're a life insurance salesman and you gotta make cold calls all the time, that's not the best part of, of the job. Well, this guy enjoys cold calls. He just enjoys being on the phone, going to every game. I've never experienced anybody, and he's 70 years old. Uh, I just, he just, he gets upset about mentioning his age. Uh, I'm basically the same age, but he doesn't like it. I don't mind it, but he's the best recruiter I've ever been around, and he's adjusting to me, and the one thing I, I keep telling him is, Tom, no matter what you do, I, I need shooters, because I went to a Final Four both at Providence and Louisville with relatively an unathletic team. Billy Donovan, Pop Lewis, and Delroy Brooks, all shooters. Dave Kiffer, Yasek Duda, Steve Wright at center. And at, 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 uh, I had a 6 7 center at Louisville with Francisco Garcia, Taekwondin, and Larry O'Bannon. So I told him, I said, Tom, get me shooters. I'll, we'll teach them how to play defense, get me shooters. And so far, we haven't done that. And that's the next hurdle for us, is to get shooters. One more ask. You talked about Baker and giving him his praise. How have you seen him like, relate to Jay Wright and Dylan Oakley? You know, Baker, look, all these jobs in the Mac are difficult. You get players that leave. You, you develop them and they want to leave and go some other place. And then when they realize the grass is not greener, they come back. So Baker's like, you know, he's a, he's a guy that is, he's already a terrific coach in my estimation, already great. And he's doing a terrific job with this basketball team. Now, were we better tonight in the second half? Yes, in the second half we were. But I was, believe me, I didn't sleep last night watching film of how good they are moving the basketball and what he does. It reminded me of being back in the EuroLeague with the way they play. So I'm very, very impressed with him. Uh, he's from great pedigree. His whole family's terrific, and, and I'm just a big fan of his. Thanks, All right, guys, take care.